Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Our message today as we continue the theme, Gifted for More, is based on two portions of God's Word. First of all, from the uh, letter of James to the Christians during a time of severe persecution when he says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow due to change. And our second text is the Old Testament lesson from the book of Amos. Uh, And I'm going to read it again from Amos chapter 8. Hear this, you who trample on the needy, and bring the poor of the land to an end, saying, When will the new moon be over that we may sell grain? And the Sabbath, that we may offer wheat for sale, that we may make the ephah small and the shekel great, and deal deceitfully with false balances, that we may buy the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals, and sell the chaff of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. In the name of Jesus. If you were with us last week, you heard Pastor Steinke introduce this new sermon series entitled simply Gifted for More. The theme of that series is on the wall from Psalm 139, which our uh, family who greeted us quoted, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And as Pastor Steinke said, it really is that I am awesomely and wonderfully made. We are the awesome wonderful creatures of God. We are not just some sort of haphazard collection of atoms and molecules that happen to get together to form each one of us. No, we are the created beings of God, created by His hand as His special people. And because we are created by God, we are gifted by God. He has blessed us. He has given us specific gifts, each one of us. And if that's true, then that has tremendous implications on, first of all, how we see ourselves, that we are God's creatures created fearfully and wonderfully made. And it also has implication on how we see other people. For you see, everyone else has been created by God and gifted by God as His special people. In his book, Discover Your Gifts, which Pastor and I are using as the basis for our messages in this series. Don Everts, the the author, tells the story of his stepfather, Buzz. If there was anyone he would not have chosen as a stepfather, it would have been Buzz. He couldn't stand the man at first. Tattooed, kind of crippled, told constantly corny jokes. He just didn't want to be around Buzz. In fact, he tells that one of the first encounters they went out to eat, his mother had already married this guy. He hid in the bathroom for 10 minutes because he didn't stand to be in the same room with him. Well, as situations turned out, he tells the story that Buzz and his mother moved in with him in his house because it was a good arrangement for everyone, although he didn't like it. But as they spent time together, Don tells that he became aware of the gifts that Buzz had. And he began to see Buzz not as someone to be put down or despised, but as someone who was truly gifted by God. He was a gift and gave gifts to others. James, when he wrote his letter to the Christians in the first century, as I said, was writing to a group of Christians that were being severely persecuted. And they began to question, what's God doing to us? Is He causing this to us? Is God sending pain and struggle to us? And James has to write to them to say, no, God doesn't operate that way. God sends good gifts. Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of lights, James says. And those gifts that come down from the Father of lights come down to all of us. The trouble is we have trouble seeing that sometimes. We have trouble seeing it in ourselves. We have trouble seeing it in others. 
Let me tell you about David. David was an interesting character. David, when I first greeted him, he was at our back door, which is where people came to the parsonage in the congregation that I had just been installed to serve. So this is right after my installation. David showed up and he had a little shamrock plant, plant in his hand and he said, here, this is for you. And he said it with a big smile on his face. Now David, as I said, was an unusual character. And when I first saw David, what I saw was a man who lacked all the social graces, who couldn't really speak well. He kind of stumbled around. He had a habit of ending virtually every sentence with the word, by golly, to the point that our kids called him David by golly. <laughs> and as I got to know David, I discovered he was a diabetic. He had no one to really care for him. On Sunday morning at Bible class, he would scarf down the donuts and laugh when anybody tried to slow him down. But every time I got irritated with David, my thoughts would go back to that shamrock plant that was sitting in our kitchen. And I would think of the love that David had in giving that little gift to us. It wasn't much, but it was his way of saying, I care about you. And I began to realize that David, too, had gifts, that he had the gift to share his smile and his love to people in his own unique way. And I thank God to this day for David. The words from Amos are pretty harsh words. Amos is writing to the people of Israel during a time, during a time really of great prosperity. Things were going well, and frankly, God got in their way. They were frustrated that they couldn't sell things on the Sabbath and couldn't wait for the Sabbath to be over or the new moon festival to be over. They shaded their balances so that it would be for their profit. Amos says they make the ephah, that's the basket, great, deeper, that they use to sell things and the shekel, that make the ephah small and the shekel great, which were paying for that smaller basket. They saw the poor as people who would be disguised, despised, discarded, sold for nothing. They put them down. They had no use for them. They certainly did not see them as God's created people. Now, I could preach a whole series of sermons on the book of Amos. In fact, I'd like to do that sometime. I wrote a whole Bible study on it once. But I'd like to zero in on one concept out of this lesson. And that is that we tend to see people as less than, as people to put down. We tend to see the faults, the warts, the struggles, the problems with people instead of seeing them as the gifts from God that they are. Now, you may not think we do that, but I want you to examine yourself. That when you see someone that doesn't match your idea of what the ideal person is, what do we do? We tend to see the falls, the faults, and the failures. When St. Paul wrote his letter to the Ephesians, he reminded us all that we are the gifts of God and that we have been gifted by God and that his most precious gift is that we are given salvation by grace through faith. For you have, you have, by grace through faith, you have, been, it, you, and it, you have this gift of God, and it's not of yourselves. You didn't do anything. It's God's gift so that you have nothing to boast about. And that's true not just of us. That's not a, not a private thing that we share here in the confines of this church. That's true for everyone. That gift of salvation is offered to everyone, not based on how they are, but based on how God's love is. And God gives us that love, not just for us to hoard, not just for us to look at ourselves and say, wow, I must be pretty good, God loves me. No, he gives that to us to share. For the very next verse, Ephesians 2 verse 10 goes on to say we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. 
to do good works, to do those things for others that God has done for us. We are His workmanship. God sees each one of us as His special gift. But then He sees everyone else as His special gifts. And He calls upon us to help others to see that. To help others to recognize that they too are gifted by God. When God created Adam and Eve, we are told that He blessed them. It's an interesting term. It has a a number of meanings. The word to bless, the root meaning of it is to kneel down. When we bless God, we kneel down to worship Him. But when we honor Him, but when God blesses us, He honors us. He blesses us not just so that we have things, not so that we can put it away in our closet. He blesses us so that we can be blessings to others so that we can enhance the lives of others. Why does God give us gifts? Because He wants us to give gifts to others. I know there are those here who over their years of life have been told by others that they're less than. You have been put down. You have been told that you don't measure up. You've been told that you have no value, that you are no good. And we can get to believe that. But if you think that you have no value, if you think that you are no good, if you think you have no worth, just look at a cross. The cross tells you how valuable you are. You are so valuable that Jesus died for you so that you could have life now and forevermore. And He did that not only for us, but He did that for everyone else as well. And so God blesses us with His gifts, and He gives us those gifts so that we can help others to realize how He has blessed them as well. Look around you. What do you see? Do you see people who have faults and shortcomings? Are there people who, when they are approaching you, you go, oh boy, you know, maybe I can hide over here. They won't notice me. Or do you see people who are gifted? Because they are. Gifted with wonderful gifts from God. And you and I have the privilege of helping them see their gifts and enhance it and bring it out of them. A promising student had spent almost an hour in the office of a very prominent German theologian. And as he was about to leave, the theologian observed, you're a very gifted young man. And then notice that he had embarrassed the young man a little bit, and he added, remember, I didn't say you were brilliant. I said you were gifted. And it is up to you to determine how you use those gifts to the glory of God. You're gifted, and so is your neighbor. And it's up to you to use your gifts to help him see his gifts in the name of Jesus. Amen.